Okay, you guys ready to rumble? You ready to have some fun? It's also gonna help if I have some of this to start with. That's much better. Warning, this video contains insanely crazy ways to deal with nasty Disney dark side toys. Do not attempt the toy destruction you see in this video at home. Okay, welcome to Disney Cars Dark Side Episode 4. Only four in this one. This is the first nasty car we're going to take a look at. It's quite a large bump and go Lightning McQueen. It has a very, very strange smile on it. And if I take a look around the box here, you're going to see some very dark side-y type of artwork. This toy car cost me $12. I guarantee you it's going to be utter rubbish. We've got found, we've got gleamy, we've got bump and go myth reaction. There's another silly read there, reading down a bit, wished sounds, wished flashing light, super wheelies, but we operated. So this toy, uh, like a lot of dark side toys, is all about the lure of the amazing looking box in a sense. The toy inside won't be as amazing. And $12 to give you some sort of relationship in price, a Disney diecast car, that's from Cars 3. Where I live, that's about a $10 toy, uh, versus that larger toy there, which was $12. Let me carefully unbox this. We'll get the queen out, eh? And the chicken will do it every single time. Okay, McQueen, it's time to play. Well, maybe the best way I could describe this Disney car's Slightly McQueen as Faco is it is inappropriate. Uh, I've had a good feel of this. I've actually put batteries into this. I want you to look at the way it has been set up. Uh, it's got a terrible hand feel to it in the sense that it just feels like I could snap the wheels off really easily. Uh... I mean, the boxing was far more impressive than what I've got here, although maybe some people argue, but Leo, it looks fantastic. Uh, I can tell you it isn't. It's got bits of glue hanging off it. It's not really finished nice. It's got sharp edges all over it. It's classic dark side. And probably the most worrying aspect of this one is that is just going to freak children out. It's not going to make them happy. I've just quickly set up my bump and go circuit there. Let me turn this horrible toy on and it, it's very loud, so you're not going to hear anything I say now. It's killing me, it's not even working. Welcome to the dark side. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna fix this lightning McQueen up. I'm gonna fix you up right now. I'm gonna need the heavy artillery. Oh, I don't get rid of that thing fast enough. We're not finished yet. Sorted. Sometimes you need the really heavy artillery. They'll sort out the very, very nasty knockoff toys. And let me just pull this over here. And we'll take a look at what was going on inside. We'll move this chicken out of the way. Um, but you can see inside here, we're dealing, that's a sound chip, I believe that there. We're dealing with the lowest, the low end uh, knockoff toys. Basically didn't work out of box, it is so brittly, this plastic, you can see how easy it's smashed up. Uh, very, very, I call these the worst styles of knockoff toys. And as for that tank, you're probably wondering, I'm tired of buying tracked vehicles. It was just a cheap thing I purchased from, I won't mention the toy store, let's not mention it, hey. Um, and within a very, very short time, uh, the tracks failed. I'm really sick and tired of seeing tanks get tanked. And a sad fact here is the only thing keeping a lot of this together on the top of McQueen here was the stickers. The stickers sort of made it that little bit stronger but I think we can see that this stuff is total rubbish and this never puts a smile on a child's face. Well let me come in and tidy up this war zone and we'll move on to the next toy. I've actually cut myself up on that last manic uh, toy destruction. Luckily I've got my cars, elastoplasts, and I'll have to put some on to the open wound. Okay, well, I think that's a lot better. Well, if you thought $12 was too much for that previous item, this item on the table here was also $12. You can see what's going on in there. It's like a whole mix of, well, basically Disney characters, or is there only one character in there as a little jet fighter? The back of the box looks like this, and I'll just track across slowly there so you can see what's going on. It's either going to make you laugh or it's going to make you cry. 
Along the bottom of the box, it showed me how to play with these toys. And as always with the Dark Side stuff, there's strange artwork abound. There's also some crazy reads as well. And that's probably the best entertainment when you buy these toys. Well, I can't carefully unbox this. Oh yeah, Chicken's done a really nice job of that. In fact, look at the, the cars there. Woo! Okay, I've sort of sorted them out in their pairs, and I hope I can get this right here. I believe they're two maters, like little jet fighter maters. Uh, don't be too impressed with this sort of stuff, or well, it does work. Uh, but it just feels horribly cheap and nasty, and sharp. Okay, so it's just nonsense business there. Is that Finn McMissile? Once again, his little jet fighter, I hope you can see that. Don't be impressed, uh, please don't be. Is that Sully? I hope I'm right there, there's a little jet fighter. And up here is Lightning McQueen, I hope it's Lightning McQueen. This is Lightning on the front there. There's a little jet fighter, red one, and a beautiful white one. So we need to learn a lesson here, don't we? If we don't learn lessons about these nasty toys, we'll like get into lots of trouble. Hmm, who are we going to call to sort these toys out? No, no, not the rubber chicken, Mr. Hammer. Hmm, where is Mr. Hammer going to start? Oh, what about over here? Okay. One down. Two down. Three down. Oh, man, four down exploded. Oh, what a shame. It's so sad, isn't it? Oh, that's a toughie. That's McQueen. White McQueen was tough. Let's see how tough the red one is. Oh, busted. Well, I've got to admit that was extremely satisfying to do, and hopefully along the way we learnt some valuable material science, or else I'm going to get flagged. And we wouldn't want that to happen, would we, boys and girls and trolls? Moving right along, uh, the last two items, what were they, $12, is that right? Well, this one is $16 for that Mack truck there with some rotten looking cars inside. I've just got the Cars 3 diecast there, so you can see the scale of this thing. It's one of these things, often when it's a large toy, they think, well, we can just slap a large price on this. Uh, I've got a sneaky suspicion this is like the low of the low end. It just feels terrible in hand now I'm touching this thing. It just feels like it wants to fall apart. And the car's in there. We've got Lightning McQueen. Uh, we've got, I think it's the King. A very strange, the Sallyized version of the King, I think and a very strange orange mater. It is really bad feeling. It is articulated, as you can see there. It is one of those things you're probably saying, well, Leo, it looks fantastic through camera here. Uh, just believe me, guys, this is terrible. It just feels terrible. It feels really weak. I think if you gave this any sort of play, it's going to fall into pieces. And I want to show you underneath this part here. If you believe those pictures there, there's the car carrier version, which was this one. There is also a tanker version. You're probably saying, oh, it looks cool, doesn't it, Leo? Well, don't be impressed. There's also that there. You can have a bit of a giggle there. And if we go along here, and I'll just track along nice and slow now, it looks like there is a McQueen carrying version as well, but who knows, it may never exist. As I've often said, they put more effort into the artwork than they do the toy. Uh, as you can see, the stickers are coming off. If I look under here, it's just shockingly terrible. That's tying in the cars so the cars don't come off. It has got that feature there. That trailers have it. I don't know what it's called, and my band-aids are failing on me already. Hmm. Yeah, I could just put a little bit of effort into this, I'm sure, and bits are going to start breaking off. I've got a feeling I could just nick off the... Let's just pull this muffler piece off here. Can I do that? Oh, it sounded terrible, didn't it? There you go. Look at that. Probably cut myself again by doing that. And you can see there, look how it's broken and how brittle this plastic is. It's just terrible. Once again, the sticker's holding that on there. Uh, the ramp area here, that's one of those little uh, rubber bands that you can't see. Uh, the back does come down and it has that, that hydraulic -y thing, whatever it's called, that there, which is sort of strange. Uh, I suppose you want to see those toy cars in there. Well, there you go, there's a bit of a close look at Mater. I'm not going to pull them out of here, I've got a very special little way to pull this down and I'll be getting into that in a moment. Okay, we're going to do something a little bit different here, a little bit dangerous. Uh, what I'm going to do, and it's the first time I've done this, I'm going to Mr. Hammer this back and cars apart. I've mounted the GoPro in the toy there, uh, using some blue tack or poster tack. I'm going to take the top piece away so we get light on the cars here. And when I come in to smash this, I'll be working from the back, working my way forward, hopefully not smacking the GoPro, and Mac's going to be busted. 
Okay, Mr. Hammer, are you up for the challenge? I've got the cameras rolling. The challenge for me is not to hit my GoPro. Okay, Mater, you're busted. The king's gone, and the queen is down. GoPro's still there. Front and back is busted. But the big question is, did the GoPro keep recording? It looks like it has done, and let's hope it's not busted. Oh, it looks like it has worked. It looks like it's worked. I can tell you I'm having a smashing good time uh, pulling down these nasty knockoff cars toys. Uh, the Mack truck actually had one of those dynamo motors, I think you call it, that's like the flywheel, they just bang some washers together to make it work. So there's a bit of engineering brilliance inside that nonsense toy. It was also a little bit funny, although it probably didn't show properly the name they gave this. Maybe that's a way around copyright, who knows. Um, but man, it is just the cheapest, cheapest, scariest form of plastic. Look at that. So scary, and I'm probably cutting myself again. Um, but why is it the Disney Cars toys seem to be afflicted with some of the worst knockoffs we see? What makes it even more laughable is when you read the sticker that was across the top ramp here. 95, best quality for your selection. Well, the next Lightning McQueen, it's a cheapie. It's one I often see in the dark side markets. I have a Cars 3 diecast there to give you a size comparison. Obviously, it's nice and large. It costs $6. You can see the price tag there. Uh, it's one of these ones. Children see this, they start nagging. Uh, silly parents start dishing out money. If you are going to buy one of these, you can bargain them down. Never, never pay the top price there. But I've got a very simple way of dealing with this McQueen. I'm keeping this McQueen in bag. You'll see why in a second. Does that sticker make any sense? What does it mean down here? Hmm. It'd be so sad to destroy that McQueen, wouldn't it? You know who's in my hand? Mr. Hammer. That was really weird. R2-D2 decided to crash the party. Well, I'll put him back where he belongs. Chicken's talking to me. What is it about these chickens trying to steal the show all the time? I kept it in bag because uh, I thought I'd have less to tidy up because they tend to shatter. Um, did it really work? Well, sort of. The bag just disintegrated. There's the cars there. The sticker is the strongest part of these cars. There's the back of the car there. Well, I did have a pullback thing as well. That's a shame we never saw that feature working. Oh well. Queen's dead. Well, I just worked out I can do something rather funny with that weird car. I made a very short wheelbase like the McQueen. Look at that, boys and girls. I'm inventive, aren't I? That's about the best fun you can have with these toys apart from this. The next Lightning McQueen, or should I say McQueen's, are two remote control ones. I believe these are the same car. Uh, one was $30, that one there, and the other one here was $40. Now one thing about these is the boxing is incredibly well done. Uh, if you were not looking carefully, you would think these are licensed toys, but these are knockoffs. I'm just showing you around the box here so you can see how it is presented. It's uh, presented really well, I'll have to admit. Sometimes I'm looking for bits of chinglish or things that don't look right. Maybe that bell is an indicator that we're dealing with something which is a little bit dark side-ish. Um, but I think when you look underneath here, it talks about the batteries and things here, but when I see that, uh, that's starting to scream dark side. So it's quite a large remote control car. It actually reminds me of the Tyco one from a couple of years ago now. I remember $30, $40. Now here is the current cars, remote control car that I found for Cars 3. That's a $29 toy in Australia. Mind you, I have seen it as high as $35. Now that little remote control car there, when I say little, is tiny compared to this knockoff one here. So in a strange way there, you're looking at things that are the same price, although one's a real McCoy McCoy and the other one's a knockoff. A lot of attention to detail, they've even got a little window there so you can see the fact this McQueen has a, a fluctuating mouth, but we'll see how good that is when it starts to run. And I'll get this McQueen out of the box. It's even got uh, NICAD batteries uh, charger. Remember this was the $40 one. Uh, there's the toy there. I want you to look at the artwork here. It's like Radiator Springs you know, out in the countryside in the USA. The remote there, and it is holding the remote in a way like you see with real toys as well. Sorry, my band aid has failed there. 
I've got the remote control free. It reminds me of something out of a PlayStation or something. It feels terrible. Man, it feels... Well, it feels dark side way, aren't I surprised? Uh, the McQueen looks impressive when you look at it like that, I'll have to admit. A bit curious about the math, but it's not until you actually pick it up, and you think, hmm, and you start to look underneath, and the way it has been finished, and there's overspray going on here. Uh, they are like rubber tyres over the wheels. It, you can see that it starts to get a bit rough nut on closer inspection. In fact, it's quite rough nut. But hey, uh, welcome to the dark side. Uh, I can actually put normal batteries in this, I think, to get this up to speed a little bit quicker. Notice it's detailed underneath as well. There's, it, they say it's only it's a rip off a real toy, is what I'm suspecting here. Look at that. The tyres are sort of funny in the way they read, aren't they? Okay, if I power this up, maybe we'll have some action. Oh, let's see if it works. Yeah, okay, this is a strange one. I'll just do the steering there. You can see this, how it works. If I power it forward, <laughs> what's that bell? And that's backwards. We've got the mouth moving and we've got lights going. What's going on with that bell? It's annoying, isn't it? That's one of the strangest uh, remote control cars that I've seen, knockoff ones. Now, if I give it multiple inputs, watch what happens. I'll give it uh, forward. I hope this is forward. If I try to turn it, you can hear we lose power. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you could easily be fooled by this one here. A lot of the stickers read okay on this. The only thing, really, the, maybe the tyres were something that we're shouting out. Let me just take away that secret tack there. Oh, just uncover the batteries again. And I'll try and give it a run. I'll give McQueen a run on the desk here. The steering is not proportional. It's either all or nothing. And it, yeah, just choppy nonsense toy, really. Yeah, it's no fun at all. That's sad, isn't it? But I'm not sort of, it doesn't, yeah, the wheel's getting caught up when I do a turn. I uh, just, oh, hopeless drive around, I. Uh, oh, that bell. Uh, it's not doing it for me, boys and girls. It's not doing it for me. Yeah, oh, terrible. What, what is it, the bell in this toy? That's a bit. I just don't understand. Yeah. So maybe, maybe some of you are impressed by this. Uh, my warning here is don't be. It's just rubbish. I can feel it's rubbish by driving this. It's just going to frustrate you. Until the chicken falls over like it ran into a chicken. Maybe that's the best fun you can have with this. Well, it's always fun when you add a rubber chicken into the equation. This toy is actually very, very similar to a real Lightning McQueen that I've got. And if you remember this one, this is licensed to the year 2000. This is a real remote control Disney Cars toy. It's actually excellent. It's like the old Tyco remote control toys. This thing has been well loved before it was handed to me via the charity shop. It is an excellent, um, nice speed to this thing. Uh, there's no mincing about when you're playing with this toy. It gives you a lot of fun. Now, when I line this toy up here, next to our knockoff here, hmm, I'm starting to see a lot of similarities. Well, under closer scrutiny, there are some differences here. Very similar in scale. The spoiler is smaller on the real toy that's larger here. The real toy has those flaps, whatever they do, in these types of cars. This one hasn't got that detailing. The eye detailing sort of the same. Uh, that's the real McCoy, and he's got his um, detailing there. Whatever those things are there on the bonnet, it's probably called something else in another world, isn't it? Uh, it's not here on this one here. I think it's called the hood, if you're overseas. Yeah, the knockoff toy has strangely got the working headlights plus the fluctuating mouth, whereas the real toy just has stickers for headlights and a mouth that says the zip all. That's funny, you know, the good toys bring back good memories. When I was playing with this toy on this table here, I was making it slip around and slide. I was putting some stuff on the table here. Maybe the best thing to do is have a flashback moment here and relive this amazing real Lightning McQueen. This is from my Disney Cars Collection Episode 2. And sure enough, I remember this as being one of the great standout toys, even though I never had this as new that I've showed on my channel. Oh yeah, go ahead and go. <laughs> go McQueen, he's slipping and sliding everywhere. Oh yeah. 
like a stun right now on that slippery surface. Whoa! Look at that edge of the table. Didn't go, oh! Now to me, this plays out much better than the infrared stuff of today. Oh! <laughs> I love on that. I just love watching on that slippery surface. Can't get enough of that myself. Oh yeah! One little curious thought I've got, would Disney release a toy like this through a toy manufacturer? It may not necessarily be Mattel, it could be somebody else, but I think this Mattel Lightning McQueen has got its heritage going back to Tyco Toys. I've got a funny feeling that Mattel purchased Tyco, like Mattel liked to buy everything. And I can tell you something, I've been looking around in the shops to try and find something like this, but as yet I have not found one. But I've got a very smart audience and maybe they can inform me if they've seen one where they live. I'd love to know. There's a lot of gusto in this toy and when toys have got gusto they're a lot of fun. Uh, I don't think this toy is going to do that same sort of trick but mind you I'm curious to try it. I don't know until you give it a try, I'll just spray some slippery stuff on here. Okay, the slippery stuff down, I'm getting a little bit of wheel spin, uh, but I'm not getting a full bit of a crash there. Sorry, the whole chicken's down. Oh, they're always good to whack into, aren't they? Oh! Ooh, that's the, the ground, ladies and gentlemen. No, I don't think this is really doing it for me. Nah. I like whacking chickens, uh, but that's about all I like doing to this thing. Oh! That's the floor again. Now welcome to the, my floor here and that's the problem with these toys, look at that, I've just broken it and it's fallen off here. Now I know the other real car had a lot of punishment and parts weren't breaking off that and that is the problem with these styles of knockoff toys, they break far too easily. Well that fall has actually done a little bit more damage than just the back spoiler. On closer inspection here, I think what would you call the ball joint on a car? It's like the lower ball joint has been broken. The piece of plastic retaining that peg there has snapped away. Uh, welcome to the dark side. It's strange, sometimes knockoff toys here uh, are very impressive to look at. As you can see, we've got some uh, problems going on now, just from a little fall. Another one up the back there. I think it's time to turn up the heat on this Lightning McQueen. I'm going to give McQueen a lick of fire to see if I can't quell that bell. Well that bell is sorted. Look at that, I've made some Lightning McQueen art. Fantastic. Well, I hope we learned something in that. If we didn't learn anything well, I get into trouble, don't I? Uh, there is my Burnt out Lightning McQueen, it's like a piece of art, that's what it used to look like, yeah, which one of those two do you prefer? I was hoping to see what was making that strange bell sound in this toy, uh, I don't think I've revealed it, it looks rather nasty doesn't it? Nice bit of work, but I don't think it's as impressive, and I don't know whether you've seen this video yet where I make my uh, minion pizza. That was rather despicable of me to show that, wasn't it? And we are going to leave this video with one final query. Oh, okay, let's just check who has been watching this video. And I want you to take a very careful look over this plush. I'm going to show you all around it. First off, so you can see what's going on there. Just noticing it's very, very overstuffed. It's got one of these on as well. I picked this up at one of the dark side markets. That's what it looks like underneath. It's quite bland underneath. And now we're going to take a look at the tag. That's one side of the tag there, I'm letting you see it nice and clearly, and the other side of the tag looks like this, I paid $10 for this. There's Hunter Leisure, and you remember the video where I called them up and we, they spoke about the problems with uh, these toys and these tags? 
Now, I want you to give me your best reason why this is either a real toy or a knockoff toy. I really want to hear what you have to say, and I want to try and work out who's actually watching these videos. I know, I know, you don't like unsolved mysteries, do you? Where's the bell in that there? Well, maybe we can work out where the bell is, because I've got another car just like it. And as you all know, I've got a little friend who likes to ring a bell as well. Okay, it's time to play. Now, is the bell up this end, or is it up this end? Well, let's find out. Oh, I heard it! I heard it! That was amazing. Hey, look here. Hey, there's the bell. Let's see if it still does a tingle. Yeah! I don't know about you, but uh, for me, Mr. Hammer always teaches me a lesson about these toys. And again, I see some of the components are basically held together by stickers. It's so brittle and so nasty. You can hear it snapping in my hands there. There's a the circuit board there. There's the motor. A bit of a bent axle there. I've got the other wheel. I've lost another wheel has taken off. I think this rod here was like the puppet string to the mouth. I think that's the mouth there. Very strange piece. But uh, I mean the saddest part to this sort of stuff here is how brittle it is. I know there'll be some viewers who struggle with the idea of me smashing up these toys. They're going to say, oh but Leo they're good toys. There are some children who don't have any toys and that's what these toys are for. No, they're not. These are killer toys. I think you've seen in every toy I showed in this video just how poorly they are made. They are really dangerous toys. And it always seems to be the Disney Cars toys and the Disney Planes toys that attract some of the worst of the knockoff toys. But what I struggle with is this, and it's fairly simple. I see these toys in far too many stores and retailers where I live. But what is astonishing is how many online retailers sell these knockoff toys. They're associated to really big name online retailers and it would be very simple for Disney or Mattel or whoever to send an email, a legal email, and have these toys shut off out of these websites. And yet it seems like this sort of selling activity never gets arrested and I don't know why. Oh, I can't get rid of that thing fast enough. <laughs> 